Okay, welcome to this video demonstration of the NEON sequencer. Today, we're going to be looking at how the modifier system can transform a pretty ordinary sequence into something a little bit cooler. So, just to give you a little bit of context here, we are in Loopy Pro. I've got NEON loaded. I've got Neon routed into the Moog Mariana synthesizer. And we've got a breakbeat loaded here that we're going to play with just to keep things a little spicier. So here we are in Neon. And I've already got the last five stages disabled, but just to give you a little tip, double tapping the pitch sliders lets you toggle a stage on and off. So we're only going to be using three stages for this pattern. And I'm going to go ahead and set some of the notes up. So we're starting with the root on the first one, and I'm going to go up to G for the second note, and all the way up to D flat for the third note. And I'm going to go ahead and set eight pulses for the first stage, four for the second, and four for the third. And each one of these stages is going to be in multi-gate mode. So this is our starting pattern, and let's have a listen to how this sounds. Okay, so we've got a pretty ordinary sounding pattern, but it's not really going anywhere. So the first thing I'm going to do is give it a little bit more of a progression. I'm going to copy this state into state B, and we're going to work from there now. So I'm going to add a modifier, and this modifier is going to be a transpose modifier, and I'm going to give it a division of 16, because I want each step in the modifier to last one measure. And I'm only going to use the first four steps, so I'm going to disable the final four steps. And uh, so in this modifier, the first two steps are going to stay at the root. The third and fourth step, I'm going to go down one interval within the scale. So let's hear how this transforms the sequence. Okay, so now we're going to copy our state into C and work from there. And next modifier we're going to add is going to be pulse pattern. And we're going to use pulse pattern to add some rhythmic variation to the sequence. So I'm going to set this to 16 again. And I'm going to set the order to be random just to change it up a little bit. And I'm going to turn off the last four stages because I only want to use the first four. And I'm going to go ahead and set some pulse patterns. Now, pulse patterns are used to make some of the notes on multi-gate mode stages not play. So when you see a filled circle, that's going to play a note. The empty circle will not play a note. And I think this will be a little bit more clear once we're listening to the pattern playback. So let's, uh, let's give this a listen. Yeah, so you can hear that it's, uh, it's leaving out some of the notes on the multi-gates, giving us some more rhythmic interestingness. So now I'm going to go ahead and copy state C into state D, and we're going to switch to D. And for this next modifier, we're going to do another transpose modifier. But this one's going to be different, because we're only going to apply it to the third stage using the stage mask. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the first two stages of the stage mask. That means that this modifier will only have an effect on the third stage. I left on the other ones because we have four, five, six, seven, and eight stages are already disabled, so we don't need to worry about those. Um, 
So the other thing I'm going to do different here is I'm going to change the advanced mode to note. So by default, advanced mode is in pulse. And what that means is that every pulse the sequencer gives us um, is going to advance the modifier step. But in note mode, it does it by note. And that interacts in a cool way with the stage mask because because we've only decided to use the third stage with this modifier, it's only going to advance when the third stage plays notes. I think you'll see when we uh, when we go ahead and play the sequence. But first, I'm going to set a few transpositions. And so these transpositions, and I'm also going to set the order to pendulum. So these transpositions will only affect the third stage and the step will only change when the third stage plays a note. So let's go ahead and hear how that sounds. Okay, so yeah, um, we're hearing a lot more notes on that third stage now. The first two stages are still only playing a single note, but the third stage is now moving through its own little mini progression using that transpose modifier there. Okay, so we're going to copy over into state E and move to that. And the next modifier we're going to add is going to be an octave modifier. And this is going to give us a lot more motion in our sequence. I'm going to only use three stages here, so I've disabled the other five. And, well, yeah, let's set this to two, this to one, and we'll leave the third one back at the root. And I'm also going to advance this with note, note mode. I only want it advancing when a note is played. So let's hear how that sounds. shifts happening thanks to that modifier. Now we're going to copy over into state F and switch to that. And we're going to add another octave modifier, but this one is going to be a little different again because I'm going to set the division to 8 and I'm only going to affect the third stage again with this one. And uh, I'm going to turn off these last four stages. This because the division is set to 8 and there's 4 steps, it's going to be a 2 measure loop. And so what's going to happen is the second measure, we're going to jump that third stage up 2 octaves, which will be uh, a little dramatic. Let's, uh, let's hear how it sounds. <laughs> copy F into G, and now we're going to work from G, and I'm going to add one final modifier for this demonstration, and that modifier will be gate mode. So gate mode works by overriding whatever the current choice is on that stage. So right now the three stages are set to multi, and what I want to do is I want to have gate mode sometimes change to a hold to add some more rhythmic variation to our sequence. So I'm going to set the advanced, oh, sorry, I'm going to set the order mode to sync in this case. And so sync is a special order mode 
It only applies to modifiers. It doesn't, it's not available for the stages. And that's because sync basically locks a modifier's step to the step of the main stages. So that means that the first step of this modifier is locked to the first stage, second step of the modifier locked to the second stage, and so forth. So the division doesn't even matter when you're using sync. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and set the first three because that's the only ones we're going to be dealing with. And I'm going to set them all to hold. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and use the trig condition option to set the probability of each one to 30%. So we're not going to get holds every time. I only want sometimes for it to hold. So let's hear how that sounds. <laughs> has come a long way from its humble beginnings. Let's once again listen to how we started over in state A. And then we added transposition to give us sort of the feel of a chord progression. pulse pattern modifier to give us some rhythmic variation. And then we added this transpose modifier that only affects the third stage to make that third stage have a little more motion, more notes, have its own little sub sequence, I guess. Then we added an octave modifier to um, give us a lot of octave motion in the whole sequence. And then we added another octave modifier just to make that uh, third stage kind of do a little squealy thing every other measure. A little chirpy thing. Um, and then our final modifier was to sometimes shift to a hold gate mode. So let's hear how that sounds. <laughs> Very simple three-stage sequence.